LEDs are everywhere, standing at the ready to convert electricity into light. You probably have a bunch of them within reach, maybe discrete components like these, or light in the room you're in. You're certainly also aware of solar cells, which do the opposite, converting light into electricity, maybe on the roof of your house, or maybe in a cheap desktop calculator like this one. But did you know that you can use LEDs, like solar cells, to make electricity rather than consume it? In fact, this calculator is actually running off of LEDs right now. LEDs like these are pretty simple to use. Give them some power with the right polarity and they emit light. To a first approximation, each LED has a constant voltage drop across it, so the amount of current determines how much light they will emit. But let's say you want to detect light instead of make light. You'll probably reach for a photodiode like one of these. However, it turns out you, that you can make ordinary LEDs behave like photodiodes. To demonstrate this, we'll build a pair of simple circuits. Each side is identical, just a cheap red LED, a resistor, and an ordinary silicon diode. The nifty thing about it, this is that on each side we're using the same LED to both transmit and receive signals. Can't do that with a photodiode. We'll monitor the voltages across both LEDs using two channels on an oscilloscope. The only difference between the two sides is that we'll be driving the left side with a 5 kHz sine wave from the ARB gen, whereas we'll be using an 8 kHz sine wave on the right. Okay, so here are the circuits. We have an old DEF CON badge blocking the light between the two boards. Notice how when we look at the spectrum of the signal on each LED, we see the driving tones, 5 kHz for the left and 8 kHz for the right. However, when we remove the optical barrier, we suddenly see both tones on both sides. The LEDs are both transmitting and receiving. You can also see some mixing products as the two tones and their harmonics and their intermodulation products are all being mixed together by the diodes on both sides. Now, I don't want to rip on photodiodes too much. If we take a half dozen of these fairly ordinary photodiodes and connect them in series, we can easily light one of the same red LEDs from before. Further testing shows why they work well as solar cells. Here, in almost 10,000 lux of light, we're simultaneously measuring the voltage across the photodiode and the current being sent by the photodiode through a variable resistance, positive to the anode, negative to the cathode. Open circuit, the voltage of one of these photodiodes is only about 390 millivolts, but even a single one could put out a lot of current. In near short circuit, it pumps out 110 microamps. It's no surprise that you can think of most solar cells as sort of big photodiodes optimized for power generation. Now, since we know that photodiodes can act like solar cells, and we know that LEDs can act like photodiodes, does that mean we can use LEDs as solar cells? Yes, terribly inefficient ones. The blue LED is particularly ill-suited for the task. Although it has an open circuit voltage of over 2 volts, it's tapped out producing just 20 nanoamps with a 10 mega ohm load. Green is a bit better, albeit at a lower voltage, 1.8 volts open circuit, but dropping below a volt at 100 nanoamps. Red is a good compromise. The voltage drops from 1.4 volts open circuit to about half a volt under load, but it's still producing about 500 nanoamps, easily the best of the LEDs. Okay, so let's see if we can power an LED with more LEDs. To make one of these LEDs visible, we need about 10 microamps at about 2 volts, or about 20 microwatts. If we use a couple dozen of the red LEDs in two banks, with the banks in series and the LEDs in parallel within the banks, we should be able to get enough current at a high enough voltage. And indeed, there we go. It took about 30 red LEDs to make this green LED light up. Also, I'll be the first to admit that the green LED isn't exactly super bright right now, but it's still easily visible. Testing as with the individual LEDs shows that this bank is making about 2.9 volts open circuit and about 17 microamps at 1.7 volts. Of course, instead of adding LEDs, we can just add a really bright studio light, about half a million lux, 6 inches. With that much light, we can light a red LED using just a single green LED. And remember that solar calculator from before? Well, with enough light, even with the solar cell disconnected and the battery still absent, we can power the calculator from a single tiny red LED that happens to come on its board, normally hidden by the case. Yep, we can actually generate the 2 microwatts or so that this calculator requires solely from that tiny little LED on the back. Amazing!